Tawny friend, this is Erica right here. I'm a Tawny citizen currently living in America. Cooking and traveling are my passion, so I'm here to share with you my favorite Asian recipes. I make kitchen trivia short and Asian home cooking recipe on this channel, so if that interests you, please subscribe and keep watching. When you cook every day, you will realize that cooking process can break down into four different categories. One is prepping, and then cook, store the food away, and cleaning. And the gadgets that I'm sharing with you today are surrounding by these four process. So first, let's start with the tools that is good for prepping food. During the prepping process, we'll have to chop off most of our ingredients with a knife. And keeping your knife sharp is very important, so that's why we need a knife sharpener. I think this type of sharpener is way easier to use than the sharpening rod or a sharpening stone. There's a number set in here that's telling you which one you should use first. Doing it twice a month if you cook daily, I think is enough. But professional chefs normally sharpen their knife right before usage every single time. This also comes with a glove that can protect your hand as well, which I think is very thoughtful. It will allow you to do a more precise slice and also it's less likely that the knife will slip around and acidly chop your own finger. Next is the Easy Pull Food Chopper. I love this so much because I use so much garlic in my cooking. I also have a normal garlic press I'm gonna talk about later, but this is great when you're trying to do multiple at the same time. I'll just throw my garlic in and then pull it like this. And you can see that the knife inside will spin and it will chop all your ingredients pretty nicely. I also use it to make salsa, pico de gallo, guacamole, chopping nuts for salads. The capacity is also pretty big and also the bottom have a little rubber. So when you're pulling it on the table, it's less likely for this to move around. Next is the garlic press. This garlic press is from OSO. I really like it because it's very, very heavy. And compared to other brands, the capacity is also bigger. Whenever I just need a tiny bit of garlic, I will use this one. The weight definitely make it easier to press. This is designed to press into these holes perfectly. You just push it real quick, everything will fall out just like that. Next is my 11-in-1 veggie chopper. I have thrown away three different type of veggie strata before. This is the one that works the best. And the cool thing about this is that this is also a veggie chopper instead of only slicing because you can open it up like this, put in a chopper inside. When you attach a veggie chopper, you will also have to put on the presser. This will fit perfectly into the holes and push down whatever ingredients you have in between. Whatever you chop will go straight into the container down here and won't fly all over the place. It comes with a medium and a small size chopper, different size of shredders, also slice, potato wedges slices, and minced garlic head. I find it super easy to use and also the knife is very, very sharp. It also comes with this little spoon that if you have any leftover inside, you can just scrape it off like that. It also comes with the egg yolk strainer. How convenient is that? Next, we're gonna talk about the tools for cooking. The first thing I want to share with you is the grease container. This is a container that you can store your leftover oil inside instead of putting it back into the original oil container. It comes with a base, a pot, a cover, and also a strainer. This can help you filter out all the excess food in the oil and make sure that the oil you keep in this container is clean. So I only put this on when I'm trying to strain something. If you watched my wok explain video before, you will know that in in Chinese cooking using a wok, especially carbon steel wok that is thin, in order to make it heat up evenly, we're adding a lot of oil first called oil return to heat up the surface evenly, pour it out, and then add in the oil that you want to use to cook. So if you have a wok at home and you're doing that step, this will come in very handy. The second one is something that I feel like everybody should have, but most people don't, which is a pan lid rest and a utensil rest. Well, this is multi-use, but I like to separate them. If you just put your utensil on a kitchen counter, it's just gonna dirty up the surface and also might contaminate your food. So having a utensil rest is 100% necessary for cooking. If you don't already have a utensil rest, consider one of these that come with the lid rest. You can put the lid in between and stand it up to save counter space while cooking. The bottom is also removable, so you can only wash this if you want to. But I normally just throw the whole thing in the dishwasher. 
Next is probably something that you never seen before, a splatter screen. If you cook a lot, you will realize that every time you got burned in the kitchen, it's not necessarily touching the wok or by hot boiling water, it's the splashing oil. So this coming very, very handy when you realize something is super splashy, you can just cover it up on top of your cookware and the splash will stop immediately. But also the net will allow the steam to come out. So this is different than a lid. Washing it is very easy as well. Just toss it into your dishwasher because it's made out of stainless steel. I don't know if you can see it. This has been like almost three months right now and these two spots are still there. It looks like a vampire bite, but it's literally oil splash. And I personally heal really, really slow. Whenever I got burned, it would take me six months to a year to heal. So this really kind of saved my life. Next one is the oil spray. When I was living in Taiwan, I never heard of the oil spray before. And after I start using it, I find it super convenient, especially if you're trying to eat healthy without using too much oil. But the oil spray that you buy in the grocery store, those are not purely oil. It also contains lecithin, which is an emulsifier, dimethyl silicon, which is an anti-foaming agent, and a propellant such as butane or propane. I'm not really sure if those chemicals are bad for you, but I think pure oil is probably better. And I don't like to throw out those can every other week because those things are really hard to recycle. So what I have is a refillable misto spray that you can add your normal olive oil inside and then pump it when you're trying to use it and then spray it out just like a normal oil spray without the chemicals. Next, we're gonna talk about the cleaning product. Number one is the Swedish cloth. This thing is so magical. It is hard when it dries up and it becomes soft whenever it's wet. I bought six of these when I just moved into this apartment, which is around 13 months ago. A whole year, I only used four rolls of paper towel. That saved me a lot of money and also saved the planet a lot of trees. Well, bamboo, I use bamboo tissue paper, but like, you know what I mean. The reason why I don't need so much paper towel is because I use the Swedish cloth to wipe off everything. Growing up in Taiwan, my mom teaches me to use paper towel only for cooking purposes. But after moving to the US, I realized people are using kitchen napkin for every single thing. Drying out their hand, wiping table. I see my friends spill water on the floor and the first thing they do is not to get a mop, but kitchen napkins, like why? I've only used five of them so far within 13 months and it absorbed water super, super well. I asked my friend before, why don't they consider using a cloth? Conveniency aside, the most problem that I heard people talking about cloth is that it stinks over time. But this, it does not smell like anything. It is very interesting. I don't know what material it is. It keeps its color as well. This is a white one. I've been using it for over two weeks right now and it dries up easily as well. Next is the dishwashing soap. This one I bought is from No Tox Life. It's their vegan dishwashing block. The reason why I wanna replace the dishwashing detergent to a soap is because I'm trying to not use so much bottle, plastic bottle every day. And we also use soap instead of liquid hand wash. So if you also care about the earth, maybe you can consider one of these dish soap as well. Before I buy it, I was a little bit worried that it's not gonna work as good as a detergent, but but it works as good as a detergent, if not better. In their website, they said that you can take stand out of laundry, take labels off of jar, spot cleaning on your carpet, using it to wipe down oven, and obviously washing your dishes. Since this soap is multi-purpose, I can just throw the tiny piece into one of these spray bottles and melt it with water and use it as a cleaning spray. So I don't need to purchase another spray bottle from the grocery store. The last category is all about storage. The first one I wanna talk about is the ProKeeper Produce Container. It comes in four, you can get this in Costco or Amazon. This container comes with an air vent and also a water tray on the bottom. So it depends on what type of ingredient you're trying to keep. There's an instruction on the lid telling you if you should open the air vent or if you should add water inside. Before I get one of these containers, I normally just store my berries and veggie in their original box and bags. The berries will get molded within three to four days and the pea shoe will get water damage over time as well. But after I got these containers, I realized my pea shoe can stay up to a whole week. 
sometimes 10 days, which is crazy. Oh, and also mushroom works really well with these containers as well. What I like to do nowadays is after I grocery shop, I just chop up, prep up all my ingredients into these containers, and that will make my daily cooking easier as well because everything is pre-washed and chopped. So when I want to cook every night, I just need to stir fry them together. So this container keep the food fresh for a longer time and also make my daily cooking easier. The next one is the dry food dispensary. I use this for rice and grains because I cook rice almost every single day. You can also use it as a cereal dispensary or you can put your beans and nuts inside. I'll say the downside about that is it is hard to clean because you have to empty up all of the chamber before you wash them. But that's a job that you only need to do it probably twice a year. So compared to the daily conveniency, I really like it. And the last item I want to share with you today is the ice maker. If you live in a rental property like me and you don't have an ice maker built in into your fridge, you will need an ice tray. And most of the ice tray is open up on the top. So whenever you fill up the water and you're trying to put it into your freezer, you have to find a perfectly flat space to put your tray on. But this one, it works differently. You can open up the cap like this and then fill up the water from this hole and then close it up and toss it into your freezer. After it freeze, all you need to do is open up the lid like this and then put it on a table to press onto the surface. When you press onto it, the ice inside will crack into individual pieces and then you hold onto the handle and pull it open. You will get a box of crushed ice. You can just use one if you want and then close it back up, throw it back in the fridge or you can use it all and then refill it for the next round. And I think that's it for today. Everything that I mentioned in the video today, it have a link in the description box down below. And again, this is not sponsored at all. Everything I introduced to you today, I bought it myself and I love it. I use it all the time and that's why I want to introduce it to you. Thanks for watching to the end. Let me know if you like this type of video in the future. Maybe we can make it once a year or something. I make video on YouTube every Monday and Thursday. So remember to hit that bell and you'll never miss out. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe on my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!